Steers Business, which is a Nigerian data and intelligence company, has raised about $3.3 million in seed funding to expand its services into new markets in Africa. In a statement on Tuesday, the company said that Serena Ventures was one of the firms that participated in the seed round. Others included Mac Venture Capital, Melo7 Tech Partners, Omidar Group's Luminate Fund, and Cascador. Serena, Serena Ventures is a Washington based venture capital firm owned by Serena Williams, the uh, American tennis legend who retired in September. We have a quote from her where she stated why she actually decided to invest. Uh, she said, one of the main reasons I invested in Stairs is not because of my love and appreciation for Africa, but because Stairs has strategically thought of how to increase the investment community on the continent. They are aware of the complexities and have leverage with data and technology, and I truly respect what they're doing. Joining us to discuss further is Preston Ida. He's the CEO of Stairs Business. Good morning. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Congrats on the seed round. How are you able to attract these investors? Well, I think it's very simple. It's the market, right? Um, I think the African market is big. It's large. There are lots of international investors who appreciate that the problem we're trying to solve, particularly around data availability, is a very big one. So it's not just you know a problem for the average professional, whether in like finance or law, but also a problem for investors because people want to look into our market, and I think they see an opportunity to help us do that. Um, I, you, I think your statement said that you plan to use the funds for expansion. What, what, what's, what's the money going to be put towards? Yeah, so expansion is very important. I think one of the things we've quickly learned about data and information is people want a pan-African perspective. So we've been focused on Nigeria for the last two years, focused on insights coming out of Nigeria. But even in the last you know, month, we spent time looking at Kenya. So we visited Kenya, also spent time in Johannesburg, looking at that market as well, because people want to be able to compare how these different economies, right, how they all, how they all stack up to each other. So I think that's going to be a big part of our, of our expansion, making sure we can also provide deep insights into newer markets outside Nigeria, a real Pan-African perspective. Great stuff. Does that expansion begin in uh, 2023 uh, or does that begin immediately this uh, fourth quarter? Yeah, so I, I think it's already it's already begun, to be honest. Like I said, I was with um, two of my senior um, senior managers for my intelligence team, our head of insights and our head of intelligence, where we visited both Kenya and Johannesburg. So I think that's already started. Of course, we'll see more, more investment in terms of setting up teams in those regions from Q4. Um, but I think that I would say it's already started because we're starting to pay attention. I mean, this is not the first time we're doing work outside Nigeria, but it will be the first time we are strategically, you know, enlarging our footprint to make sure we have a wider data coverage. Christos, speaking of wide data coverage, your website, your interactive website that you had for the 2023 elections was, you know, widely celebrated for how interactive it was. And, the, and this is going back to 2019, I think even 2015 as well, for a House, Senate, Governor and President. Um, as far as the um, 2023 uh, elections coming up, what enhancements, are there any enhancements you're looking at as far as the type of data that's going to be coming in, of course, in I guess coming from with, with what INEC will be feeding to the website. What 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 are the plans? Yes, of course. So we're actually going to be launching that at the at the beginning of November, maybe maybe end of October, but I, I deal beginning of um, November, and we're revamping. I think the major improvement you will see is just more granular data. So the last time we did it, we basically for, we stopped at state level. So we did look at sort of Senate, but again, when we looked at like Senate results, it was just captured at state level. This time around, we've been able to actually map out the entire sort of Nigerian map down to ward level, right? So we're looking at, you know, the states, of course, going to the senatorial districts, the House of Rep constituencies, and down to your local government ward. So people would be able to track elections at that very granular level. So we're talking about results for, you know, ward um ward elections on both in the february election and the march election i think it's going to be really exciting because for the first time you're going to get that very granular perspective on how elections are actually going across the country and of course in classic stairs fashion it's going to be visualized and very easy to access
Excellent stuff. How, how deep is、um, Nigeria's data black hole? I mean, we had a discussion on the morning show on oil theft, and one of the guests, who's an energy expert, was talking about mapping where the oil pipelines are and how it shouldn't be hard to, to figure out where oil is being stolen and so on and so forth. Talk, he used the US、um, example with how strategic petroleum reserves they know how much oil they have on any given day. The, 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 the data deficiency, how bad is it? It's, it's, I, I would say it is disappointing where we are today. You know, for a sort of giant of Africa, I think we can be doing and we should be doing it a lot more. I mean, the entire reason our company exists, the reason why we create value for our customers, whether on the consumer side or the enterprise side, is because everyone is really struggling to access data. We're talking about even when people can't find data, they don't trust what they find. So, you know, you might invest hours, you might get your team of analysts, and you pull up numbers and you're still thinking, well, this isn't quite it. So, I mean, we hear in the news all the time. There's so many disputes around our data points. How many liters of petrol does Nigeria、um, consume a day? How many Nigerians are there in the country? Is Kano larger than Lagos? There's so many data gaps across the country. And it's a very deep black hole. We definitely need to see more companies, more people leveraging the data that they already have by sort of bringing that together. I mean, that's a big part of what we do at aggregating this data from sort of third parties, creating our own proprietary data. But I would say that data is really the lifeblood of any investment、um, community. And at this stage, I think we are doing ourselves a disservice by not making data more available. Because by not doing that, I think we make it harder for people to actually do business in the region. All right, so I, I want to ask you about opinion polls. It's still data, but that's not, I don't think that's you know, your forte, where you folks are. But look, you know, Joe Biden is gearing up for November midterm elections. His approval ratings are about 41%, 42%. That's known. Polls show a majority of Americans feel the country is headed in the wrong direction. Why do you think we don't have enough regular, credible opinion polls here? With that can tell us how majority of Nigerians feel about subsidies, or how they feel about oil theft, or how they feel about personally arming themselves because of security, or how they feel about where the country is going, or even approval ratings for President Buhari or any other president, whoever comes in next year. Why, why do you think that we're, we're lacking that? Yeah, I mean, even in a sort of contrary to what you said, we are quite big on polling because we see it as a form of data verification, right? It's a way to gather information about what people, you know, what people think, what's actually going on in any market, in any economy. So we are actually bullish on, on polls, and you'll start to see state polls sort of come out either at the end of、um, Q4 or the beginning of Q1. I think the, one of the biggest blockers has really just been capital. Nigeria is a very big country. I think most people forget how large Nigeria is, right? So finding any statistically, you know, A representative or nationally representative pool, it takes a lot of work to do it right, right? You need to bring in the right sort of experts. We're talking now about, you know, statisticians, demographers. There's a whole lot of work that actually goes into making a poll reliable. I mean, we recently saw the poll from Bloomberg where they commissioned, you know, premise to do a poll and criticism from people as well. How, how representative is this of the Nigerian sort of Voter population. So I think that there are a whole host of challenges there, particularly capital at the, at the top, but actually finding a representative sample because imagine you want to reach people in the rural areas to get their perspectives. I mean, there are what, 95 plus. Million Nigerians with PVC, that's a lot of people, and you don't need to poll all of them, of course, right? You just need to get a sample that's actually representative. But I do think that more work is actually ongoing in this space. We've definitely been seeing lots of exciting partners like the African Polling Institute, NY Polls.、Um, so they are doing some work there, but I think that at this stage, what we're going to offer in this space is, you know, just essentially enhancing what's already been done with technology. We're very bullish on seeing how we move from a place of just doing telephone polling to actually doing online polling and recruiting people offline to poll them online, right? I think that there's a lot we can still do going forward around polling, but I would say that we should actually watch this space because, you know, stairs, we are definitely interested in making Nigerians have more access to, you know, perspectives on the economy and, you know, politicians like, like you just mentioned. All right, great stuff. So, what would it take then to have、um, monthly? Job creation figures in Nigeria, for example. Like tomorrow, Thursday, every Thursday, we update US jobless claims. Last week, we had 
the non-farm payrolls in the U.S., which is standard monthly that tells you how many jobs are created there. The Bureau of Statistics is supposed to be in that area, but for two years now, we haven't gotten updated unemployment figures. Like th th 3% is what we've been banding about as unemployment since um, Q4 2020. We do not know how many jobs Nigeria creates on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, uh, bi se biannual or semi-annual basis. What, what would it take to get that on a, on a, on a, on a more regular basis? Yeah, I think it's definitely working with the National Statistics Office, right? Th that is the key to that because, you know, at the base of any data ecosystem is the National Statistics Office, right? You need the public sector to be able to provide you with some sort of foundation for data gathering. Now, I think the NBS has been, you know, I mean, the NBS we've seen over the last decade has drastically, you know, improved and put out a lot more data. Of course, still still quite a few shortcomings um, here and there, but that actually requires partnerships because with that, you need to leverage the infrastructure that comes with the National Statistics Office, which in our case is NBS, right? But also the different state level statistics offices. So for instance, in, in Lagos State, right, we know there have been efforts, you know, recently to actually improve that Lagos statistics office because Lagos in of itself is, is like a large economy, right? Lagos is probably what the fourth or fifth largest economy if you if you make your country. So I think it really comes from supporting public sector. And that's something we're very keen to do, actually work with you know public sector to you know do do polls of our own track specific numbers it's really a, it's really a partnership and then once you build that base the first time the key thing is to build it in a recurring way so i'll give you an example when it comes to sort of surveys for instance we like to take the panel approach meaning that we get people that we can ask a question in january right but we also keep them on our books so that we can ask them again in february and so i think it's really an infrastructure Problem. Then when I say infrastructure, I don't mean houses and, and real right. I'm talking about the right sort of data agents, the right sort of flow of data from the different statistics offices, even private companies actually making making themselves more available. But in the absence of that, I think we've also seen a growing case of using proxy data sets. Definitely, I mean, we, we did some analysis of our own to see that, at least in Nigeria, some of the data we looked at from Jobberman indicated that jobs in the IT sector were in high supply and had a lot of demand from people. So that's when we looked at about 1 million applicants over maybe 200,000 jobs, right? So I think in the absence of those really large databases that come from public sector, you have to rely on your proxy data sets from companies, from aggregators, essentially from any company that has a big role. So yes, I think you can start looking in the direction of you know those job sites to actually gather some more information about perhaps jobs that are made available and jobs that are actually successfully hired. Thank you.